Are you stuck in an endless loop of thinking about an ex? Maybe you're out with friends, supposed to be enjoying yourself, but you find yourself not fully present. In the back of your mind is your ex a nagging thought. So how do you get rid of them in your thoughts? I'll be giving a few tips that if applied consistently over a period of time will enable you to move on from an ex, regardless of the circumstances that led to the breakup, you know, whatever reason they broke up or even you broke up with them. But it's important to note that there is no clear silver bullet here and that this is a process, but a process that actually, if applied consistently, works. So the first thing you need to have and the first thing you need to work on is dignity and it's the dignity and the self-respect and it's dignity for yourself. It's perfectly normal to slip on this element, you know, especially at the start of a breakup. For instance, in the start of a breakup, it's very common to plead your partner not to leave, to beg them to stay, that you will do whatever it takes to not end the to not basically end the relationship. That is perfectly normal. But there has to come a day where you decide, I'm going to start behaving like a person with dignity. And this is not only because you're aiming to make yourself more attractive to them. That's not the purpose of acting in this way, but it's for yourself and for your self-worth. So no matter how hard it is, no matter how much you be suffering, you're suffering because of the breakup, you need to think about Am I showing dignity to them and to myself? And when you stop pleading for an ex to come back, or when you stop pleading for an ex to not break up with you, you're really sending them and yourself a message that you know your worth and you know basically what you bring to the table, you know, and that's going to help you in this process of basically healing. So the first thing you need to do is really to stop pleading and to refine, to rediscover this dignity you have for yourself. After you stop pleading, you can start working on understanding and interpreting the relationship. You need to interpret what happened over the duration of the relationship, whether it was a six months, one year, five year relationship. And of course, it's hard to do this when the feelings are strong and you're going to be maybe focusing on the good moments. You know, you're going to try to remember the good holidays or your feelings will bring you towards remembering the positive things. But I am certain that there were issues in the relationship. For instance, maybe they did not value you enough and that's part of the reason why they broke up with you. Maybe they were unfaithful or even if they were not unfaithful, maybe they were giving attention to other people. Is this the kind of person that you want in your life? Think about what are the bad things that they did and really focus on those and realize that after all, even if you have feelings for them, they were not that good for you. Because if they were, well, they would have not left, you know, you wouldn't have broken up, broken up. A, a good relationship is a relationship where you don't break up, where you work through the issues. You know, that's what a good relationship is. And if they were the perfect partner or the partner that would justify the kind of feelings that you're having for them, you know, or you idolizing them, then you would still be together. When you make this argument, people often say, but I was not perfect either. You know, I made mistakes. I did X, Y, and Z. You know, I, you know, whatever you did. And I think it's normal to understand that you, of course, also made mistakes. But you focusing on the mistakes that you did during the one year, two year, five year relationship is in reality just a tactic that you're using to justify their behavior, to keep on the hope, to keep on idolizing you, them. You're perfectly aware of the things that they do and have done wrong. But you think, okay, but I was also not perfect. And in that way, you're kind of justifying what they did. But I'm pretty certain that on the balance of things, they probably did a lot of bad things and probably much more than you did, you know? Uh, so, so that's the reality. Yes, you made a few mistakes here and there, but that should not hinder you from the healing process. That should not make you justify what they did. That should not be a reason to continue idolizing them. It's normal that in a period a long period and in a long relationship where things were in particular maybe tumultuous that you did mistakes it's perfectly normal you it will be madness if you never did so you need to allow 
you need to forgive yourself for that and you should not use that as a pretext to stop uh, seeing the bad things that they did and in the rare circumstances where you did the mistakes you know for instance you cheated or you did something like that well then you just gotta learn from the mistake and move on but i think that in 99.9 percent .9 of the times that's not the circumstance a practical tactic that you can use which i've said many times is to write a list a list that you can refer to when you miss them a list of all the things that have happened that were bad, you know, uh, whatever they might have been. There might have been things that they said about you. There might have been things that they said against you. It might be things that they said against your family. Whatever it is, it might be a discrepancy of values. It might be that they like to party and you don't, you know, whatever it might be, uh, conflicting interests. And have that list available to you on your phone or wherever it is. And when you have the feelings emerge, you can refer to that list and you're able to understand Okay, I have these feelings for them. Okay, I miss them. But rationally, I know that they were the wrong person for you, for me. And if you continue doing that over and over and over and over, over a period of time, whether it's weeks, whether it's months, you will be able to eventually realize and rationalize, okay, this person was not right for me. And the feelings will gradually subside. subside. Using the list is very important, but you should also not go to the opposite extreme. You should not, you know, hide completely your feelings and you should allow yourself sometimes to grieve the loss and the relationship. You know, if you're just gonna, the moment you feel a bit of nostalgia, you go to the list, you know, and try to kill the nostalgia, that's also not a healthy uh, approach, you know. But generally speaking, you should use this list as much as you can without bringing it to the, an unhealthy extreme, basically. Uh, another very important point is the point around time, and this is very much spoken about, you know, time, time, time. Um, but uh, another thing that I think is important to realize in addition to time is for the people that have gone through a series of breakups is that, you know, you will survive and the beginning is horrible and so on. But if you consistently apply the tactics and the way of thinking, you will get better and you will get over it, you know. And if I think about myself and my own life and I look back at the, the several serious breakups that i had and it makes me laugh to think how you know i don't know desperate is the right word but you know how disencouraged i was there after immediately after the breakup you know and now i just look back at that and i'm like oh my god it's ridiculous why did i even waste that much time thinking about this person or whatever else you know so it's important to realize that it will get better uh, and to 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 realize this and of course if it's your first breakup your first serious breakup you don't have that institutional knowledge of having gone through several breakups, you know, but people that have gone through several breakups, they know how it works, you know. So also be aware of the routine and the drill that you will go through every time you go through a serious breakup. And it always feels like the latest breakup is the worst and this was the most serious relationship and it had the most potential, you know. That's uh, kind of how it is. And uh, uh, But uh, uh, be optimistic because of that. And the final point, which is a bit of a, a bit of a shocker and it kind of tells you that you've actually healed from the relationship is to be grateful to be grateful to them and to be grateful for the breakup because of all the reasons that you have written on the list or because of all the reasons that you were unhappy you need to realize that that was an unhappy relationship and you got out of it you know whether they broke up with you or you broke up with them you need to be grateful for the breakup because now you're also able to find someone who actually loves and adores you and someone who values you for for what you are and uh, maybe now yes you feel hopeless and dating is tough and we all know how tough dating can be sometimes but i think that it's better to be in the struggle of finding and the challenge of dating and finding someone who fully cherishes you it's better to be in that situation than to be in this comforting or in the comforting hug of someone who you are with but doesn't truly, truly want you.